in the regions under stable Islamic control, Jews and Christians were tolerated as dimnis, mm -hmm. like elsewhere in other Islamic lands, and could not build new churches or synagogues nor restore the old ones. Mm -hmm. Segregated in special quarters, they had to wear discriminatory clothing. Subjected to heavy taxes, the Christian peasantry formed a servile class attached to the Arab domains. Many abandoned and their many abandoned their land and fled to the towns. Harsh reprisals with mutilations and crucifixions would sanction like would sanction the Mozrab, Christian Dimmis, calls for help from the Christian kings. Moreover, if one Dimmi harmed a Muslim, the whole community would lose would lose its status of protection, leaving it open to pillage, enslavement, and arbitrary mm -hmm. killings. And what's amazing is that yes. when the Muslims first conquered Spain, one of the first thing they did was they, call, well, they, they wrote up something called the Pact of Umar. Mm -hmm. And in the Pact of Umar, it says that Christian lands, uh, basically lands that, were, that churches were built upon, were automatically confiscated by the Islamic elites. And... Uh, when the Muslims took these lands, it was illegal for any Christian to build a church uh, uh, on these lands. Uh, churches were, if, if a church was already there on the land, it would be converted into a mosque. So it was illegal for, for Christians to rebuild churches in these lands. And it reminds me very, very much about what the communists did when they came into Russia. After the Russian Revolution in 1915, uh, what was the first thing, or, or one of the first things that the, that the Leninists did? They took away the land from the church, and they took away the land from the nobles, the rich, the high class. And they gave the land to the communist uh, community, the, the proletariat, as they called it. And it was illegal to build churches on this land. So what we find is that Islam, you know, people say that Islam is a conservative religion, that it's very parallel to Christian doctrine. What we find is that Islamicism or Islamic doctrine parallels more with leftist mentality or liberal uh, uh, ideologies than it does with Christian Christianity. Ted, didn't we see that specifically in your father? Uh, he was in the, what, the Obsession film talking about, uh, well, in that same film, the, the connection between the Mufti of Jerusalem and uh, Hitler and Nazi. That's a very good example, and, and Hitler had a lot of, you know, Hitler didn't just ally with the Muslims because Muslims wanted to kill the Jews. It was part of that, but Hitler really allied himself with the Muslims because Islam and Nazism both share a common ideology, much like Nazism uh, and Buddhism both shared a common ideology, which is why Hitler worked with the Japanese as well, because he saw great favor in the uh, in the uh, Buddhist doctrine, which but, was, by the way, I, Ted, uh, I need you. I want you to crystallize that before we go back to Osama. That's very important, and that's what Peter was trying to draw out of all three of us. What was it that Hitler saw in Islam, in Shintoism, in Buddhism that uh, he found uh, amicable and desirable? And, and found a, a, a common ground to deal with these because someone would point out, boy, these things are so different. I mean, Nazism, Buddhism, Shintoism, Islam, they're worlds apart. What is it that connects them together, brother? That's an excellent question. Um, there's one historian who I, I'll read to you what he said. He was actually one of the, uh, the, the, the right-hand men of Hitler. Mm, and after mm. Hitler killed himself and after the fall of the Reich, I believe his name was um, uh, Albert Albert Spiel, I believe his name was, Al Albert Spine, I believe. I forgot his last name, but I'll read to you what he said. He said, quote, the Germanic peoples would have become heirs to that religion, Islam. Hmm. Such a creed was perfectly suited to the Germanic temperament. Hitler said that the conquering Arabs, because of their racial inferiority, would in the long run have been unable to contend with the harsh harsher climates and conditions of the country. They could not have kept down the more vigorous natives so that ultimately not Arabs but Islamized, Islamized Germans could have, uh, could have stood at the, at the head of this Mohammedan empire. So it shows that Hitler actually envisioned Germany becoming a Muslim country. 
And Hitler mm. himself said, he said, why did Germany adopt the religion of Christianity? He says Germany would have been better off adopting the religion of the Mohammedan or adopting the religion of the Japanese. Which, and he said that both religions, the reason why they're so great and the reason why they fit the Germanic people so greatly yeah. is because both Buddhism and Islam uh, 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 worship a great leader or they follow one great leader collectively. Mm. In, 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 in Japan, they, their religion was Zen Buddhism. And within Buddhism, there is this idea of the master. The sa each samurai clan in, old, in the old times had a master which they would die for, which they would kill themselves for the master. They would worship the master. And in Japan, uh, they began to alter the Jap Japanese society because it was so broken up into clans. Mm -hmm. they, wished to, they wished to unite all of the nation. So they said, how do we do this? How do we unite all of the clans? So they said, oh, all of the clans will now be, will become one clan. And once they become one whole clan, they will be under one master. And that was the emperor of Japan. And uh, they all collectively followed it. This is why when you see uh, in Japan, even today, you see a lot of the uh, karate demonstrations in Japan. They all are doing the movements, the forms collectively because they believed that the people would be strong if they worked collectively. The same thing with uh, Hitler. Hitler believed that Germany should become something called a Volksmannschaft or a cooperative community uh, in which everybody works collectively. And Hitler described it as Everybody working to, to, uh, collectively, working together like a human body and, and working together like cells in a human body. And he saw people like Christians, people like Jews as viruses to the body politic. And he mm -hmm. saw that these viruses, these germs needed to be eliminated. And, and, Ted, and Ted, you're doing a wonderful job of, of explaining this and we appreciate this excellent information. Uh, but now, very quickly, spiritually, what is the connection, Osama, that, that Ted has, is showing us some things that I didn't know, uh, all of that information about the, the outward political uh, intersections, mm -hmm. Nazism, Shintoism, Zen Buddhism, all of these things, Islam. But spiritually speaking, Ted, as your father would point out, uh, what, what is it that united them, Ted? Well, it was, it was the idea that, well, basically Hitler wanted to, in a way, Hitler was, you know, the birds of a feather flock together, like they say. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Hitler, you know, when we look at, uh, for example, like I said earlier, Hitler loved Buddhism or loved the, the, the Zen Buddhism in Japan because he saw that both these religions, Nazism and uh, Buddhism, they followed a leader. They followed a master. Um, and he saw that he, he really admired that because Hitler believed that in his uh, utopia that he would lead the whole world, that he would be the yeah, leader yeah. of this whole earth. So he saw, he, he saw the Japanese as a great ally because he said, I could work with these people because they share this common uh, ideology. But also there's other factors that I would like to uh, tell you. Um, within the spiritual realm, yes. uh, both, both uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Nazism, all three of these ideologies – even Islam uh, have or contain environmentalism within uh, Hinduism. There's an idea that killing or selling animals, animal meat, is a sin. Um, Hitler himself was a vegetarian. Hitler himself saw uh, uh, the spirituality within Hinduism. For example, Heinrich Himmler saw Hitler as uh, uh, um, carrying great karma. And they actually believed in very yoga-style doctrine, yoga-style ideology. Well, uh, Ted, this is, is excellent information. I'm going to have to cut you off just simply because we're getting off topic, but it doesn't reflect at all on the quality of the information you're sharing. I think we can do a whole show on that aspect that you're sharing right now. And, of course, the key here is that all of those are anti-Christ. Absolutely. And, and the, that, unity, the unity among all cults yeah. it is to remove Christ yeah. from the heart of men yeah. and from the people. Well, I want to give uh, Bruce just, just two minutes to share with our viewers once more the, uh, the need to give to ABN. We're coming into our last half hour, and uh, after that we need to give Brother Osama uh, a good portion of time to, to move forward in his presentation, and then we'll end by the show uh, by going back to Brother Ted.
as well as uh, Brother Osama, finally, to summarize. And then we're going to be back with this presentation, you and I, at 11 p.m. Eastern tonight. Like for those, yeah, very good. So let's go to Brother Bruce in the other studio, <laughs> and uh, he's going to share with you all once again the important needs we have here at ABN.